I've been asked to remove the dust off this coving. Well, you can see it's it's not dust, it's mould. So we'll just have a look at where this coving's sitting. So we'll take a look at the cove in there. And then we've got the double glazed units. This is the frame. And then outside the plastic trim, steel lintel, and then the brickwork facing up. So then we have the soffit board and the gutter. So where that soffit board is, the brickwork won't be far past the top of that. The roof line comes to the gutter there. the same window from outside this side of the room there's a cooker and on this wall there is a boiler on this wall is adjoining next door so there will be possibly a radiator on that wall now this is the external wall Obviously, that radiator was moved from this wall, but before it was put there, there was a thermal liner put on this wall. So, this external wall, this coving, hasn't been took off, so we don't know what it's like behind there. And again, thermal liner has been put on this wall, so the customer says, obviously, didn't take this off. So then once I've seen it from outside, looking, you know, it's a, this is a dormer, then I decided to pop a hole in. So I'll just have a look at this. I have a piece of paper towel over the hole there, a bit of tissue. So you see that movement there. So there is obviously air uh, moving around at the back there. one so I'll show what we'll do so because I don't know how fixed this is put a screw in and then well, a couple of feet down I'm gonna put another screw just to make sure that this is fixed to the wall So corners will be held in by this other piece, looks like this piece went in first. So all my screws are in where I need them and again this corner up here is held back by this piece that went in after this one. So now I'm ready for my next stage. So I've got a wood bit on the end of my drill and it's already started putting some holes in. And I am measuring these literally six inches apart. Just tap them along. I've got one there, so I'm all right.
I've only got five plugs left, which will take me to just that one there. So, foam is already starting to come to that hole there. So, I'll plug this one now and then I'll just leave it 10 more minutes and then see where we're up to and then I'll keep going and then in another half an hour or so I'll be able to come back along and tech the first few out this is my test patch which you see is starting to drip so plug them otherwise you'll have this stuff raining down now where I did this test bore these plugs won't fit so a bit of tape will be okay for now but get the right size borehole and these plugs are okay again always leave a little bit of a space for the pressure to be moving coming out the foam at these ends will creep along this side so that will expand out so not too bad just keep the pressure off it alright this has been over half an hour now you see how much it's come out there so it's done its job down this end um, I'll just get my steps and we'll just take a look over here and it's just appearing in that hole there now so I can start to take my plugs out from that end but what I will do is still keep my eye on what's going on because this might not cure as quick being behind the back there now you could use water I haven't and the main reason why is again I don't know how well this coving is sealed so I may get foam coming out I may get water coming out I'd rather there be just a touch of foam rather than water coming down and just messing up this paper so now like I say remove some of them from down there and I'll keep on going and so when removing these it's just give them a slight twist because they will be stuck a bit I'll remove enough to finish. Okay, this is as far as I'm going to go to because I can just see the foam expanding. So hopefully it's not going to go too much. But again, just be careful. This will drip onto here. I've also got sheets below. And that's the last one in on this side now hopefully the foam will expand back up this way so they should be okay keep your eye on them they may pop off but they're okay they're not moving anywhere so again these were the two that are left open when I finished and it's expanded along and it cured more where the air has got to it where I started taking my plugs off here, those last two there, to see how much has come through. And again, little bits up here have just started to appear. So it may take a while for this to cure. Leave those screws till you're confident all this foam has gone off. I've got my white spirit on a cloth just for any mishaps with this stuff I need to look at the trim on this windowsill mould in the corner there's thermal liner on this wall but the trim wasn't took off now I say when I say um, keep your eye on what's going on so at the minute just underneath the edge of the cove in there I've got foam coming out like I say, 
put these screws in just to ensure that this wasn't forced off but now I've got foam coming out near the paper so we need to get this sorted out now I've got some white spirit on the cloth and I've just got a large snap blade I'm going to wipe some of the white spirit onto the snap blade I don't want to get too much white spirit on this paper it may mark it it's a vinyl paper so I should be quite um, should be quite okay with this but again be careful and I just want to just pick this away from the paper like I say it's vinyl paper so while this is still a bit tacky it shouldn't stick to the paper Leave these on my steps while well, I take this trim off. I'm going to go around with my blade, run around all the edges, and just get this thing off. Yeah. You can see that gap all the way along where the sill was damaged when they took the old uh, window frame out. And again, there's possibly a, a gap up the side there, but it doesn't go any further. Could just be the uh, the cooler that's wetting everything with the condensation and that's why the papers come away slightly it's just a gap that's gone black but it's all the way along some bits quite close but this is the end where I was feeling all that uh, big gap there so we get some foam in that. I'll we'll have to keep an eye on that's it. springy that paper there. A scraper and the blade. I'll just have a look here. Might not want to come off because it could be stuck with silicon. I might have to put the trim back yet. Just get this gap filled. Uh, stop silicon. Yeah, the trim's definitely going back. Okay, so the thermal line has not come off because that adhesive is um, breathable and it's waterproof whereas the paste that has stuck this paper, this is a heavy vinyl, has just been wetted and it's just come off. So I can stick that back but what I will do first is I'll foam it all, keep that paper up there Keep that paper back, foam it. We'll just have a look at this down here. So I'll just get in there. 
the thermal liner is on, that's okay. Just this paper on the surface. So if I get this mask dot cleaned off, mask it all up and get foaming. To make life a bit easier, I've offered this trim back up and I'm going to cut right the way through the paintwork, the existing old paintwork underneath that's going underneath this trim. It'll be easier to clean off. So literally just biting into the wood. Cutting right through that paint. Just means now when I start to bring the shave hook over this, try and get this silicon off. Where it fractures, it's not going to come beyond. Started to do it here before, so that's why I decided just to cut through. Just on a slight angle. about removing the sealant than anything else. Get all this vacuumed off. And once you've removed all that sealant then all this back edge and anywhere where it started to flake this way I can give a really good sand. Mostly concentrating on this edge. I don't really want to go into this too heavy because this is a P60 so it's quite rough. Again, I just want to concentrate on these areas. The frame's all cleaned off and I put masking tape on. Small pieces and overlapping, just easier to get it on. And then run a piece up the side to square off the end. This has gone slightly below the windowsill. And this piece that was unstuck, I've just Put on here with a bit of low tack masking tape. Same at this other end. Now you can see the paper on top there and the lining paper underneath the thermal liner. So I'll have to stick all this back with some border adhesive or something when it goes back. So we'll get this foamed up. And while the foam's in there and I can start knocking some of them off and getting some filler in. But I think before I put the filler in, what I will do is go over with bleach, wipe the whole lot down with mild bleach before I get my filler in. But to make sure I get right into that corner, because I want some to travel up here. Because I don't know whether this has been done all the way. There's not a gap thermal liner might be quite tight so that could be suppressing a lot but again there was no insulation down here this was just plastic over a gap so there's no insulation properties no insulating properties in that I'm not going to put loads in there but Now I can just run along and form this gap. And working up to this corner, I'm only going to bring it so far. And now I can concentrate on this without getting anything on me. Well, I can leave that to cure now. That's okay up there, it looks like it's slowed down and stopped. So I can remove the plugs there, knock the foam off, start getting some bleach on. Last one's coming out now. And it is still active here. And it's just creeping out a bit there. 
So I'll probably end up with a few snots like this. That's where I stopped for my break. And where I've just took those out. That far end is okay. Get some bleach on, get them screws out. White with my When you knock the foam back, make sure there's enough room for the filler to go in. Plenty of overlap adhesive. Make sure I get the adhesive behind the paper and the lining paper. Onto the surface of the thermal liner. Make sure there's plenty on. I just want to seal in around the edge, a bit of paint on the sill. Second fill in that lot and get it painted tomorrow. Sorted.